Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to take a look at the best 10 brawlers in Brawl Stars right now. So balance changes, they just dropped yesterday. So we get to take a look at how the meta is going to play out. Of course, it normally takes a few days, maybe even a week for the meta to settle. These are going to be my predictions of what I just feel like are going to be really good in the upcoming meta. So make sure you subscribe to keep up with all the information. And let me know down in the comment section below what videos you want to see, especially with all the new balance changes. Okay, so let's jump into the 10th best brawler in the game right now. So I might be overreacting here, but I just feel like this buff is so strong. It is Bonnie. So Bonnie at number 10, I feel like it's pretty... I won't really say it's the most wild reach. She received two buffs in the last set of balance changes if you missed it. So the first one was to her main attack damage. It got increased by 12%. So that's a meaningful buff. Anything I would say above 8%. You can definitely feel the impact straight away. It's going to leapfrog her multiple tiers at least. I see her being like A tier minimum. But the big change, except for that damage buff, was the fact that now with the supercharged gear, she'll take three hits to get her super. So that means now, yes, yeah, she might struggle sometimes in cannon form, but then you can use the extra gadget charge gear and get four uses of Sugar Crush. So you can beat uh, the snipers. You can just get around the map much quicker. And just three hits to get super, you can then counter your counters with a super so people make the common misconception bonnie where you can just play bonnie everywhere you can't she still really thrives in certain scenarios the longer range maps of course and like i said once you get one super it's a free kill every single time you know in game modes like heist you can get free damage a lot of the time hot zone she's good at gaining back control knockout bounties she's good in a lot of long range maps so don't underrate bonnie i think she's a really good pick in this meta now jumping into the ninth best brawler in the game right now we have carl so quickly before we jump into carl we'll be looking at a couple of brawlers that could quite easily be a top 10 brawler in the game as well amber just misses out amber's super versatile even since she got the damage nerf a month ago she's still easily near enough an s tier brawler in this meta we also have spike and jesse who both have pretty decent hypercharges and overall just super versatile. Jesse recently got a hypercharge buff, so she's able to cy cycle through that 10k turret a lot more. So she's still a really good pick in the meta. And then finally, just missing out is Pearl. Again, Pearl's still super versatile. The gadget nerf did a little bit, but at the same time, it's just a pure damage output she puts out. Just makes Pearl such a good brawler. Now, let's talk about Colvin. So this is going to be a very hot take because people think the Cole buff wasn't too meaningful and maybe underrated it a little bit but i like to test it out against real plays and as soon as i play a goal i knew that surely it's going to leapfrog easily a couple of tiers you know minimum for me again eight tiers so the pickaxe damage got buffed by 12 percent so again the kind of meaningful percentage wise i would say is above eight percent and you'll really feel it in a meta a 12 percent damage buff is crazy so you also pair this with Heat Ejector. It's not really like a broken combo, but it makes Carl a little bit more viable, I'd say, on a grassy map. I've been playing it in Brawl Ball recently. There's so many tanks. But if you connect a gadget onto an opponent, you can deal like 6,600 damage. So that can pretty much take way over half HP of so many brawlers and one-shot so many brawlers as well. But that's not going to be the main thing about him. It's just a pure damage output that you can put out with Carl. It's insane. He's still going to be easy to counter in terms of his super. The way that Carl goes in and out of the meta is normally when they do something with the attack damage or do something with how fast his projectile goes. So for me, I think he's easily going to be at least minimum a tier brawler in the meta the next up is the eighth best brawler in the game right now i went with nanny so i always kind of go back and forth between who's better between nanny and piper i know nanny counters piper so you might think that nanny's better but i think nanny's a little bit more limited in terms of every single map but still nanny is absolutely insane right now in terms of bounty and knockout there's pretty much no better brawler than nanny right now even brawlers like angelo will struggle a little bit against a good nanny player because a couple of quick taps and you're literally deleted also, the reason why I'm just loving Nanny right now, you just take a look at the map rotation and there's just so many open maps. You know, typically where Nanny would struggle is when the map pool doesn't really favor her, but pretty much everywhere. You can take a look at every single game mode. There's always a map where you can always thrive with Nanny. And as I said, with Nanny, the best thing about it is she's a great counter pick. There's hardly anything that counters Nanny on an open map. The only thing that counters Nanny is basically skill diff because if you're a good Nanny, you're going to delete everyone on the map. Next up, as the seventh best brawler in the game right now, we have Piper. So Piper received a small nerf with the last set of balance changes. It was a 4% HP nerf, which basically did nothing to her. You know, the main thing about Piper, which is making her so strong, is just purely her damage output. When she starts to rip through tanks even, that's when it starts to become a problem. She's also super versatile in the fact that you can switch between gadgets. On Bounty and Knockout, you can go with Homemade Recipe and get easy kills. And then on my, uh, game modes like Brawl Ball, Gem Grab, 
even on heist you can just switch the gadgets so then you're immune to any type of aggro brawler which is just so cheesy and crazy to me she used to be a super high school cat brawler i would say that right now she, she's pretty cheesy i won't really say she's too high skill cap of a brawler unfortunately but still she's an insane brawler the reason why she's a little bit higher than nanny like i said you can pretty much get away with playing piper everywhere you can play piper in pretty much every gem grab map she's a lot more consistent in terms of damage output so for me piper is still easily a top 10 brawler still as the sixth best brawler in the game right now i went with bell so i know that bell isn't your flashy brawler you're not going to make unbelievably game changer plays with bell but a good bell will always get the most damage in the game or at least some consistent damage and good stats so the reason why Belle is so strong is because she's one of the few kind of sharpshooters or long range brawlers that has a hyper charge in the game. So, already, even though there's some good counter picks to her, I'd say like Piper, Nanny, Angelo, still the map pool very fav favors her a lot. And then once she gets hypercharged, she can easily turn the game around. It doesn't matter that her hypercharge isn't the most flashiest. She still gets a good speed boost. She still gets other good boosts as well, which is going to allow her to win those clutch scenarios. Whilst brawlers like Piper and Nanny, they don't have that purple button. It's still cheesy. Hypercharge is still pretty good in the game. And again, with Bell, the good thing about it is that she's just good into pretty much every single matchup. You can take a look at all the game modes and maps. And I would always suggest going to Bell because she's just good against everything. Now we're moving into the best five brawlers in the game right now. Starting off at number five with Cordelia. So Cordelia, he was untouched with the balance changes. I was very surprised. He's always in and around the top 10. And now with the hypercharge, he's definitely a top five brawler in the game. So the reason why Cordelia is so good already, he's just so strong in the shadow realm. He's able just to pretty much win every single one v1 because of those boosts he gets within the shadow realm but outside of that it's just really hard for brawlers to get a kill on cordelius he's really really fast brawler he's got good utility with both of his gadgets and then by the time maybe like a tank or anything has closed you down you can just put them in the shadow realm you can use it defensively you can use it aggressively and then you're going to cycle through to your hypercharge so the good thing about it is that his hypercharge takes a little while to get, but at the same time, you hypercharge any brawler in the game and it's a free kill every single time because they can't get away, they're slowed. So even if they're trying to hide behind a wall, you can easily just minute play the gunfight and win every single time. So Cordelius wasn't nerfed surprisingly and he's still easily a top five brawler but it's the fourth best brawler in the game right now we still go with leon so leon actually received a nerf but last set balance changes it wasn't in the patch notes in game but he did get a nerf but i don't really think it was too meaningful maybe over time it might catch up to him that might be the case but at the same time i'm still playing him a lot and i'm still getting the same success rate mainly because his hype charge is so easy to get his super is so easy to get and once you get your hype charge super you're unkillable. You get the speed boost, you get the damage boost, and it's literally over for the enemy team. You can just make overwhelming plays, get two free kills with one hype charge, and that's what makes him completely broken. But the nerf that he did receive, it basically means at maximum damage, you'll just deal less damage, which uh, means you get less damage output over time, which means you get less super charge. That was kind of the thing they were aiming for. If you didn't know, his damage drops off. So at maximum range, it used to be 40% of his maximum damage which was 384 damage and then they nerfed it to 30 percent which is now 288 so it's like a 100 damage difference again the main thing about leon is that he just shreds up close you know he'll take a little bit of a while while at maximum range to get his super but he just needs one super and then he can start chaining so for me leon's still insane really versatile and he's always the go-to pick for me so next up is the third best brawlers in the game right now we have larry and laurie to me, it's kind of insane that they've received 11 nerfs now, four in the last set of balance changes literally yesterday. And to me, they're easily a top five brawler in the game still. So if you don't know what they did, essentially they made it so you can't spam out attacks as quickly as you used to. But still, you can still spam them out really quick. So they nerfed their unload speed. They nerfed the healing by a little bit. They nerfed the shotgun damage of Laurie and the super gained from his shotgun a little bit, like 50%. But that's not really doing anything fundamentally these brawlers are so broken you know I, I, like i said 11 nerfs and they're still really strong i just don't get it i've watched pros play it. i've played with larry and laurie and ranked on ladder and i'm still getting consistent wins i'm still getting consistent start players so it just goes to show that they're still really strong i think in terms of how we turn them down in the future i think the first protocol is to remove their fast movement speed we don't need a fast throw of it still have a lot of hp one of the highest i think 
out of all the throws in the game. They still deal insane damage. They've still got their second explosion, which is super cheesy and really easy to hit. There's just so many things you need to nerf about them. The gadget as well is just still really good utility. The fact that you can swap positions and get really good value. And look, they still probably need another four nerfs to even make them balance. So now moving into the second best brawler in the game right now, I went with Charlie. So again, another brawler in the top five. She's been in the top five literally since her introduction. And she didn't receive any nerfs somehow. I don't get it because Charlie's so versatile. If you don't know, she just absolutely melts right now. The fact that you can still spam auto aim so quickly is just so cheesy. She has really good range for a brawler that you can play as a lane. Also, of course, her super is still easy to hit. I say this every single time, but still at maximum range, I find it so easy to trap people in a cocoon. She also kind of got like a buff last month. She got a hypercharge rate buffed, which I know her hypercharge isn't good and flashy, but still you get the movement speed buff. You get all these different buffs as well, and you still get an extra set of spiders to chase down the opponent. So you've essentially got like five, six, seven sets of spiders running after sharpshooters. There's so many sharpshooters right now in the and she's the best counter to it she's also the best counter to any aggro it's just it's just insane how, how isn't she nerfed yet she's been at the top of the meta for a while i'm waiting for her to be killed off surely soon but whilst she's still meta make sure to abuse her because people are still underrated people are picking her ranked and i'm unsure why because she's easily a top two brawler in the game right now so now we're moving into the best brawler in the game right now this is a controversial one a lot of people won't agree but i think it's angelo i think the pros will probably agree as well at least minimum top three for me so the reason why i put angelo at number one then so of course he has insane damage with one super and a fully charged shot that's 8800 damage so i know it does take some good skill to use this brawler but this is a competitive tier list so i think once you get the grips of angelo use him on those longer range maps you'll realize just how strong he is so the reason why he's so broken is because he has a very fast movement speed he has a lot of hp for a sniper I compare that with piper nanny i don't know why he has so much hp that probably needs to be toned down also the fact that he one shots pretty much every brawler in the game of course that shouldn't be a thing it takes him two shots to get super which then you can start the healing process again and then just deal insane amounts of damage and of course he can go over water again i just can't believe that lo lots of people myself included underrated this brawler there's gonna be a few of you guys that knew he was gonna be strong but i just thought maybe because of how hank is it's gonna be really hard you know you're never gonna be able to heal up with angelo but the star power alone is the most underrated thing because you're able to heal up whilst keeping up that damage output so for me angelo is completely busted right now make sure you're abusing him as much as possible avoid grassy maps but still at the same time he can still be a pretty good brawler also i didn't even mention his gadget is still really cheesy the fact that you can jump literally the whole length of the map and get away from any aggressive brawlers but also you can actually make sneaky aggressive plays with this gadget i've scored loads of goals with this gadget and brawl it's really good for that anyways that's gonna be it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed let me know who you think are the best 10 brawlers in the meta since the balance changes don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time